Welcome to Godot 101, a tutorial series where you learn how to use the Godot game engine. In this set of tutorials, we're going to dive into the 3D side of things. We'll look at how to navigate in a 3D editor, how to create and manipulate 3D objects, and how to work with some of Godot's essential 3D nodes, such as meshes and cameras. Ready? Let's get started. When you first open a new project in Godot, you'll see the 3D view. And in the 3D viewport, the first thing you'll notice is these three colored lines. The red is the x-axis, the blue is the z-axis, and the green is the y-axis. So in Godot we're using in 3D the y-axis up. Some other 3D programs might use different orientations. Some use z up, but in Godot the x and z are the plane and the y is the up and down axis and positive y is up. And this color scheme is going to continue throughout the interface. The green for the Y, the red for the X, and the blue for the Z. And you'll see that in the inspector later. Now navigating around in 3D is performed using the mouse and the keyboard together. So here are the main controls. The mouse wheel is going to zoom you in and out. The middle button, if you click the middle button and drag, you will orbit the camera around whatever object you're looking at. Holding down shift while you drag with the middle button will pan the camera. So we're moving the camera horizontally and vertically but not changing which way it's pointing. And then right clicking and dragging will actually rotate the camera. So the camera's not moving but it's rotating. Another navigation method you can use is if you press shift F you'll be taken into free look mode, which means now just moving, all I'm doing is moving the mouse. And then by using WASD, you can fly around. This is similar to the UI that's used in a lot, or the control scheme that's used in a lot of 3D games. And you press Shift F again, it'll toggle back out of that mode. Now you can also control the camera using the perspective button up in the top left. This lets you snap the camera to a certain view, top down, from the front, from the left, etc. And so depending on where your objects are and how they're arranged, that can let you snap to a particular position and view it from the angle that you want to view it from. So let's add our first 3D node. So if you go over here to create root node, when you click on 3D scene, it's going to add a spatial node. And the spatial node in 3D is the equivalent of the node 2D when you're in 2D space. All of the 3D nodes inherit from it, and it has a set of properties that all 3D objects are going to need. Now, first thing you'll notice once you add it is this little object appeared in the center, these arrows and circles. Now, this is not the node. This is called a gizmo. Gizmos are used to move and orient your 3D objects on the screen. Notice that they're color-coded along with the axes. And so to use the gizmo, you can grab the arrows. So I grab the green arrow, I'm moving it up and down along the y-axis. If I grab the blue arrow, I'm moving it along the z, and so on. And the rings are used to rotate the object. So if I grab the red ring, I'm going to rotate it around the x-axis. And so by using the gizmo, you can arrange and orient your objects where they need to be. Gizmos can operate in two different modes. By default, they're in global mode, which means they are aligned with the global x, y, and z axes. So even if I move along z over here, and I move along x, and let's say I rotate it, the, the body rotates, but the axes are still pointing parallel to the global axis. If I pull up, it's going to move up along the y-axis. Move it back here. And the other mode is called local mode. And if you go over here, you see the button here toggles between global and local space mode. And you can press the letter, the T key on your keyboard to toggle that. When we're in local space mode, now if I rotate around the x-axis, so do the arrows. So now these arrows are representing the body's local x, y, and z. So if I move it along the z, it's going to go off in this diagonal direction. And now I'm up above the plane. 
So depending on how you're moving your object, toggling between local and global space will help you get it to where you want it to be. Now let's look at the inspector for the spatial node. Over here under transform, you'll see you have three properties, translation, rotation, and scale. So unlike the 2D nodes, which have position, translation is the equivalent. So you see if we start moving it along the Z, the Z changes, we move along Y, the Y changes, and so on. And a quick note about units. In 3D, one unit is typically considered to be one meter. Um, you can really have it represent whatever you want if you're making a game where everything's microscopic and you're running around in a microscopic world each unit might be you know one millimeter but in general each unit that you move is one meter and so an object that's one meter cube would be the size of this grid that you see right now and now if I rotate you'll see the rotation numbers change and so on and so you can use those in the same way that you would use the properties in 2D. Now just like a node 2D, a spatial has no size or appearance of its own. In 2D you'd use a sprite to add a texture to your node so it would be visible. In 3D you need to add a mesh. A mesh is a mathematical description of a shape. It consists of a collection of points called vertices and these vertices are connected by lines which are called edges and multiple edges together make a face. So for example, here's a picture of a cube, and so the corners are the vertices, and there are eight of those. The edges are the connections between the vertices. There's 12 of those, and the faces are the square surfaces that are formed by the edges, which are six in a cube. So typically meshes are created using 3D modeling software, such as Blender. You can also find collections of them online to download. However, sometimes you just need a basic shape such as a cube or a sphere. In this case, Godot provides a way to create simple meshes called primitives. So let's add a mesh instance to our spatial. So a mesh instance represents a mesh. And over here you can see in the inspector its mesh property is empty. So if we click the down arrow, you can see you could load a mesh that you have, or you can create one of these primitives. Let's select the cube. Now let's save our scene and run it and see what our cube looks like in game. Well, it looks like nothing. And that's because in 3D you won't see anything in the game window unless you have a camera to tell Godot what you want rendered in the game viewport. So we need to add a camera to our scene. So I've added the camera. Here's its gizmo. Let's move it out of the box so that we can see it. So that is our camera. This pink, pinkish purple pyramid here is the camera's, represents the camera's view. So it's facing this way. And the little triangle up here on top shows you the top of the camera. You can always check what the camera sees by clicking the preview button here. That's what the camera sees. So if we wanted to, we can move the camera up a bit, rotate it to point down a bit, and then it's going to be looking at the cube like that. Now if we play the scene, we will see what that camera sees. Now you might notice that this cube appears kind of a light bluish color. And in reality, this, this mesh is white. The blue color is coming from the ambient lighting. So in the next part, we're going to talk about how to light your scene and also how to change the appearance of your mesh using a material. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.